start off with our, with our X control. So we can this at these four programs. <coughs> or invoke. these programs we can invoke. So we can invoke ink. So uh, it's going to mutate X. So what we have here is a, a first class function. It's, it's a real value. First class means we can pass it in functions, we can return it in function. Treat it like any other value, like a string or an integer. It, it's got three variables. So it's a variable x that is bound in the lexical environment. And that's really the key part. Because all of these functions here all refer to the same x. The same x that is shared. <coughs> Text that was created by our call to make the count. So when we call in, we can call in a few more times and one find that variable. We can call get and it will, it will actually fetch the value of get to a We can then call set and we can call, we can call get again. We didn't quite read that in the back of the See? So, um, so we sort of have, sort of have a, a, a form of encapsulation of this. Kind of, kind of like an object. There, there are languages that will basically use the idea of a, of a closure to implement objects. Because they're, they're, they're another way of doing this. They're, they're not very really easy to use this. So that's, that's what a lot of continuation is. No, sorry, that's, that's what a closure is. <coughs> so, if we want a continuation, if we want a real, a real life continuation, we need function, we need something to do with the environment, we need something to do with it. But just to combine that, so we can use a closure as a continuation. And we have to do this. So that's what we can do. I'll be wondering at this point why we want to do this. Okay, that's a good question. Why we do this? Well, a lot of the time, if you're writing code, you're, you're, not, you're not just going to work on a whole bunch of values in memory, echo it and answer, that's the end of it. It's pretty well right You might want to interact with the real world. In fact, I mean the real world is slow, it's unreliable, it's... Um, sometimes you want to do lots of things at once as well. You, you might decide you're going to start a few things, you're going to wait for some sort of things to carry on, you could do them sequentially, bit annoying. Because you don't, because you've got a lot of dead time in between operations. You, you might decide you're going to open a GCP socket, wait for the round trip, wait for the round trip, wait for the round trip, just come back, you're going to open another one somewhere else. You might as well open both of them at the same time. So, um, so if, if you're doing asynchronous, non blocking smart programming, you're, you're sort of always passing these closures around that, to represent what you're going to do next, so that you can come back. Really the same thing. So I think there's quite a bit of need to do example code. So I said, I thought for a while, what can I think of that is interesting and relevant? Well, that is asynchronous, it's going to take a little while. I thought, beer. Go to the bar, you need to get the attention. <coughs> that might take you a while. Once you've eventually got the attention of the bar, you're going to have to be beer. That might take a little while. It's a bit annoying if you can't do anything. You, you, you go to the pub to socialise, right? You go to the bar, you stand at the bar, you, you, you attract attention to violence. If you can't do anything else, you can't talk to your friends, you can't check your phone, you can't watch the football or curling on the TV, whatever. You can't do that. So it'd be nice if you could sort of wait at the bar and then carry on with something else and know that when the bar is finally ready to deal with you, you can carry on and do something else. So, we can do it instead. We can go to a different bar, a bar that is asynchronous. And we can decide that rather than having a function that returns the bar from the bar machine, we'll have this function. I'm going to try very hard to call it a procedure because a function is something that returns a value. Well, this Attracting the partner, not going to return it immediately, but we're going to do it with a false What we are going to do is pass in this closure here that says what we're going to do once we've got the partner. So we call this, and, and we'll work out what the body can But this will return straight away. So we can carry on with our program down here, we can talk to our friends, watch the vault, and so forth. Eventually, after we've 
and the bar and the bar and the bar constantly arrives. So now I've gone. So you can continue with this block right here. Actually, we've got bar and we can then order our beer. And again, we have another continuation here. To, uh, to actually wait for beer. And again, this is my bar. So again, we can count with our friends. Eventually, beer arrives and we drink beer. Now, this is a, this is a fairly boring example. But um, something we could have added, for example, we could decide to thank the barman. So, in this little closure down here, we can still see the, the barman there on the left side. So, we could decide we can put the barman here to the barman out of the tank. So, this, this sort of is, is the point of having a, a real lexical closure because you, we, can, we can remember the barman from out here, even though this, this outer function, uh, sorry, this, this middle function here may be <coughs> we can still remember the barman when we get down, when we get down to the middle of here. That's, that's sort of our context, that's, that's what we were doing, to remember what we were doing. <coughs> Um, we've had a habit of passing continuations around in variables called K, 
Um, the, other, the other reason I decided to use K was that a lot of people <coughs> might decide they do continuations with some kind of web stuff. They might be using catalyst. Catalyst has a habit of using dot C. I thought if we use dot K, try and establish this convention with K, it's a bit nicer. It also, it also means that I've still C letter prefix to stick on function which I will get to the later. So, the new C K, it's continuation. It's continuation with K. It's a journey. So, of our tricky cases, how can we deal with this? We can have a one. For example, let's go all over the place. Um, so, rather, rather than writing our on all one, we can have the use of something to KY. KY is going to stick the bottom here. It's going to make confusion. Change the power. You ain't there. We'll go up and change the power. <coughs> we'll go up and change the power. Eventually, you know this 
sign the continuation barrel and the unbroken continuation, which jumps down here. It's a way, it's a way of writing the code neatly so that it still needs top to bottom. Because we could just store, we could just create this composure here, store it in a variable up here, so that we can name it down here. But that tends to lead to one readable code, because you start writing backwards. You first of all write what you're going to do when you've done something, and then you write the code to do it. So, by some PC here, we have a way of naming the thing we're going to do afterwards, so we can pass it around our situations. And you can sort of write these things, these, these things just so sort of keep going down, pass it easy. Maybe it's not. Works. <coughs> if we want our cider, uh, this is not big enough for loading. Not big enough for loading with one more slide. So you want to do something in parallel. You want to order beer and you want to order cider. So what you do is you can rely on the fact that you call a function, say that we ask the bar of beer or something like that. He's not, he's not going to wait until, until he's got the beer. That, that, that method call, that function call, whatever, is going to be really quick and it's going to return more or less straight away. And at some point later, it'll be going back to the convention. So now we've got the call back, we can decide to call another function. So what we do is <coughs> Lots of functions, and then wait for the ball to complete. So we have this is a part. So a part is going to take a big long list of 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 employees, and this sort of this final one at the bottom. So the final one at the bottom is special on it for me. But all of the rest of them, what it's going to do? is going to try, to try and start all of them as quickly as we can, passing in the each the continuation. And they can go off and do their thing and eventually they can go their continuation. And then Kim Carr is going to wait for them all to finish. Once they all finish, they're going to go to the final one. So what we can do is we can go grab in, and we're going to run quickly both finish it, but not take What we need to do though? In this, in this example, we have, uh, we have a, a requirement to pass some values around. So what we're going to need to do is store uh, some variable uh, right temp here to get the big capture in these closures. So the, the, the same as the, the dollar x in the, in the counter example. We have multiple of these continuations closures, that all reference the same variables. So, so we don't really need any way to pass values around between between all of these things. Because we can use the language to do that in So we can all run here and here arrives and store it into the a variable. We can go continuation. Now this here is a go to so it's it's a it's not the usual kind of go to way they have in front of the loss rack. I mean right. This is a one of, one of Carl's many famous examples of using the same keyword to sort of mean something completely different. What that going to mean is we're going to call a function, but we are not going to set up a, a, a language level continuation. We're not going to call it, we're going to jump to it. Because, again, the, as with the problem is with the while loop, what you really want to do is jump to that continuation and then that, that's it, you're, you're done. You don't want to call it and then that. So what we can do is we can use go to it. Say, actually, just, just, I'm done here. Go to work that continuation. Um, so it's like a stack. Um, there's, there's no chance of falling out accidentally and carrying on, carrying on and doing other things. Um, so that it's, it's a nice way to improve this. So you start to write a lot of these characters. Right? Um, so, yeah, we'll go up here. So what we've now got. Sorry. Um, No, I just so what I tried to do with this with these slides was sort of demonstrate a number of, of, of things in this new slide. Uh, so 
there were negotiations around that. Okay, well, this, 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 this was this was one that, that I wrote and then realised that it was so, uh, And I thought I keep it in there because it is it is a good example of of that going on. Uh, we have to make the children there. That was. Yeah, I mean, it also 
para a chance of damage. So, you know, if you don't pass a damage, you could just hold it, you could just hold the, the thing in this file. Pass damage. But then, you might fall off. So, there's this, this one for quite a while. It's not called the tail. If it's the tail keyword, what that does is it turns a function into, into effectively a go to. So, it's called the tail. Where you call that, and then rather than returning, so rather than returning out here, this, this entire function gets sort of replaced by that. It's, it's a thing that a lot of the list the list of languages take care where you sort of jump to another function and then jump to another one, just keep jumping, and then when it actually return, you're going to return right way back to the beginning straight away. Because you've got to the end of the material, there's nothing else better to do to pair with. Um, it's, it's basically just a bit of awkward writing, um, but it, it just makes the, it makes the source code read a lot easier. And you can just put tail push and push it back. So that's not that. Uh, we've also got a few more random functional things. So I started playing around with the other sorts of things that I could do. So there's a fold, you can fold things. I couldn't think of any vaguely exciting video related references. So here we go, I'll hold my back. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You clearly never stabilised the table with a beer bat. Yeah. You can sort of stick all of the. Stick all the way to the other Yeah. I might be right today. But, um, but anyway, so, so we have we have our fault. Um, we have another way of writing this down here. Um, I decided I would, I would, um, which I'm sure is a good function. So, so quite a lot of the times, if, you, if you're going to write a large block of code and you're going to call some these things, then we'll take situations. Occasionally you might get a bit stuck and there'll be a piece of code that you can't do anything about because it will be called return. But that's a case that we've picked one before here right there. We could call it. Sometimes it's occasionally useful to just sort of turn a, a, a return style function. So I have this little utility function, if you can. Um, if anybody knows Haskell and Haskell theory, you probably know why it's called the Just don't worry about that, it's called the Okay, let's give it a little, little code block. Right there, so just add it to that together. And then it's going to return that. And what it really does is it takes that, takes that function and returns you a new function, which is that turned into CPS. So basically it's a function that takes two values and returns that value. What that's going to do is it's going to just return us a continuation that will take two values, add them, and then pass the sum into the third the third value. It's just going to use the D, so we can just add numbers here. So <coughs> it's not a particularly good example there, because I couldn't think of any idea of this question. It's very rare that I've ever actually lived there other than writing really silly examples like add numbers. So it can be made with that. Um, the whole, the whole, the whole functional thing. The whole functional thing turns out not to be as useful as I thought it was. It would be when I started writing. <coughs> in Perl, we have, and I'm sure, okay, we, because we have, as as we take part of time, we have this idea that um, that we have <coughs> these variables that we can change as we do this go. In the real, in, in the proper functional language, you, you don't have any parameter to change your state. So you need a lot of functional style code blocks that pass values around. Whereas because we've got this mutual state, we don't need that. So it doesn't matter. Here we are, right? Here we are. Right? Uh, so I will speak that in a
create two markets sharing the same government, and then of course they run. What happens is they iterate. So you get one quarter for the first one and one quarter for the second one. So that's a capital force. We can also do, we can also start to do fancy things if we're equivalent of the IO event network. We can have a government that's tied into the event, the event loop. It's going to start flushing, uh, running its loop in, during the idle times. So you can sort of set up a while loop and then run it in the background while the rest of your program is running. Which starts to get very useful. It then starts to allow you to do fancy fun exciting. We're doing this in the background. Right? Without really, without really getting into more organized things in the modern effect. Thank you. 